Okay, I wanted to make a video on some of my brainstorming that I've been doing lately on how Tesla's Wardenclyffe Tower was going to work. Um, I've been having some trouble with my rotary gap. It kind of started falling apart, but anyway, I was thinking on how exactly Tesla was going to transmit industrial levels of electrical power and how exactly it would be... Um, working and technically how would it tap energy out of the ionosphere and things like that so what uh, my ideas are is that instead of everybody knows of Tesla's uh, death ray the particle beam weapon that he supposedly invented well he did invent a particle beam but I don't think he invented it to be a weapon I think what he did was that when he was studying uh, lightning and the ionosphere and his uh, high frequency discharges of his Tesla coil is that he discovered that if he had a positively charged beam that was shooting up into the ionosphere the positively charged beam would then attract all the negatively charged electrons in the ionosphere it would start, um, you know, they would start uh, gathering around the positively charged particle beam, like, um, you know, like negatively charged magnets attracting to the positively charged magnets. Uh, if you can kind of imagine how that would look, I think it would look just like the Northern Lights or the Aurora Borealis or whatever they called it. So I think that's what Tesla built his particle beam, his particle beam four but when the world was going into war he said that it could also be used as a defensive weapon particle weapon you know it wouldn't be an offensive weapon because it's coming from a stationary tower how would a stationary tower be used as an offensive weapon it wouldn't it would be used defensively but i think what that laser was it wasn't a death ray weapon it was a positively charged beam of electricity that shot up into the ionosphere that attracted the negatively charged particles and when the negatively charged particles started to gather around that beam then he would use his tesla coil to then start discharging um, electricity into the air and what happens when the you discharge the electricity into the air as the air the atmosphere all around you becomes ionized it, it and the more the electricity is in the air the more the air ionizes or the resistance in the air goes down and it's exactly I think it's how thunder works because whenever you hear thunder you hear that crackle right before you hear the thunder you hear the k -k -k, and then the well I'm thinking that what that crackle is is it's a discharge of electricity that's lowering in the ionos or from the ionosphere that's going a little bit lower in our atmosphere but once that discharge initial bolt occurs then it ionizes the air around it and it allows for the air to be less resistant or become a conductor which allows for more discharge so that's when you hear the the roaring thunder part you hear the crackle of the spark and then the, and the discharge that follows it because this area of atmosphere is now ionized from that initial spark so my ideas for how Tesla would use the ionosphere is he first would use that particle beam to attract the electrons and then he would start discharging with a rotary spark gap at a specific frequency he would have one end of his capacitors attached to the rotary gap that goes up the aerial antenna and I think instead of using a bipolar setup he would have the other side of the capacitors going to the bottom side of the primary that was grounded I think that this end is going to be grounded and connected to the capacitors and this other end is going to be connected to the aerial antenna and is going to have the rotary gap so I think then you would get specific discharges and then in between those discharges the capacitors would be discharging into the ground 
So then this whole circuit would become negatively charged where the current would be going, the positive current would be going into the ground. So then the negatively charged electrons from the ionosphere would then be able to discharge into the top of the Tesla coil and follow the current into the ground. So that's my theory on how the operation of his Wardenclyffe tower would work. But in order to be able to transmit power from this um, this discharging that's going on, is you would have to tune the Tesla coil first to a specific frequency with uh, AM broadcasting equipment. And it's an interesting thing that there's a specific type of metal. This is a I call a ferrite rod. It's a, or an AM antenna. I took it out of a small radio, and for some reason, this metal has a very unique property, unlike any other metal that I have uh, experimented with. This metal can act as a iron core and become an electromagnet, but electricity does not flow through this at all. This has no resistance, so the, it's like um, it, it, it's it's like uh, you know it's like the uh, the. It's like the, the, what is it, the stuff that's over the wire, the wire coating, it's, it's, there's no, um, there's no electrical current that passes through this, but it still is able to magnetize from electricity. So the, that is very, very rare and unique in metals, considering that 75% of the periodic table is metals, and pretty much all of them conduct electricity if you put enough voltage on it. But, like, like I, if I were to connect this to, let's see here, so there's, there's no sparks. Let's see, let's see if I can get this to stay. Okay. There we go. So there's, see, let's see, hopefully, if there's no spark, see, no spark, versus if I were to touch these things together, see, there's a spark. <laughs> Man, this always always makes me a little nervous. Okay, see, so but for some reason, electrical sparks don't pass through this metal, but it still magnetizes. For some reason, it's quite amazing because there's no other metal that I know of that does that. And because that metal doesn't allow sparks to travel through it or electricity current, it can be used as a merger for the. Tesla coil or the amplifying transmitter and the broadcasting equipment. So you can have this thing broadcasting at a specific frequency. Instead of having an aerial antenna, you would have the top of the aerial wire wrapped around the bottom of a big ferrite rod. And then you would have another coil begin on the other end, and that would be the bottom of the Tesla coil. So the sparks that happen in your discharging of capacitors and the discharge in the ionosphere wouldn't go through this into your broadcasting equipment but this would be magnetized and it would be um, magnetizing the metal in a specific way that would magnetize the copper wire in the top coil in a specific way that would then tune the Tesla coil to the same frequency but it doesn't Will allow for sparks to pass through it into the broadcasting equipment. So this piece of metal right here is the key to wireless transmission of electrical power. For some reason that piece of metal right there is what makes it work. If it if, like before I had just a plain cylinder like this with two coils it didn't work. The electricity spark was able to get into the broadcasting equipment. So I had to do some more research and 
for some reason this piece of metal right here is what does it and you can find them in all the radios and it's an AM antenna or ferrite rod I'm not sure what metals are in it I tried looking up what types of metals are in here I, I'm, since it's called a ferrite rod I think it's uh, iron ferrite I read that there's copper and one or two other metals in it and it didn't it wasn't specific I think it might be lead or something but whatever the mixture is it's uh, it's definitely the correct one so that's my uh, idea for Wardenclyffe for now um, again this is not a factual video this is just a brainstorm of my idea on how uh, how I think it all works so um, mostly looking for some feedback on this idea instead of using a Tesla coil only and instead of using the so-called death ray as a weapon you would use that particle beam to shoot positively charged um, particles into the ionosphere to attract the negatively charged particles in the ionosphere and then you would start discharging your Tesla coil to begin ionizing the air to allow the resistance in the atmosphere to go down to allow for a discharge of those uh, negatively charged particles that you're gathering right above your discharging coil so you get all those if it works if that if a par shooting a particle beam it does in fact attract the negatively charged electrons which it, physically it makes most sense you know positively charged beam negatively charged electrons you know positive and negative attract but the idea is that you would gather them up there discharge it into the coil and the coil being vibrated at a specific frequency by the broadcasting equipment would be then electrified by the ionosphere and the current would be going into the ground so the um, broadcasting power level would be the differential in the amount of discharge voltage that you're putting into the top of the coil and the amount of discharge voltage that is striking it from the ionosphere because that's what AM radio is, amplitude modulation when somebody talks into a microphone broadcasting on AM frequency the voltage uh, increases and decreases ever so slightly depending on the um, a, a person's voice you know as he talks the voltage goes up and down instead of using your voice the differential in voltage is going to be the discharges of the Tesla coil and the discharges of the ionosphere so you can imagine the differential in the voltage there you can get to some pretty high numbers so that's my idea on how Tesla was going to transmit unlimited industrial levels of electrical power all over the world so if this one's set to a specific frequency by broadcasting equipment then all you would need after this would be just a Tesla coil or some kind of coil that is um, set to the same frequency as this and it would be picking up the discharges in voltage that are happening so if you have say 50,000 volts going into a discharge here and you have a couple million volts getting discharged here you can see the difference it's going to be you know a few million volts minus 50,000 that's how much voltage you're going to be picking up in a uh, antenna you're going to be picking up the differential in voltage because if the voltage remains the same then you don't get any power what gives you the power is the differential in the amount of voltage that's being broadcasted that's why in AM radio you get a little bit of power without a, without a battery if you build a crystal radio and you have a little headphone speaker you can actually pick up radio stations without a battery by just having a coil of wire and having an antenna sticking up in the air and having another coil of wire that's right next to that coil the radio waves sends a signal into both coils and then you can pick it up through a little speaker without a battery the energy in the radio waves is enough to power a small little speaker because of the differential in the voltage that's being uh, sent out with that frequency so if that's the key you want to try to transmit at an AM frequency and the more and 
the difference in voltage that you have in your broadcast, the more power you transmit with your signal. So that's my idea for now. I'm going to be hopefully testing some of this out soon, but as I said in the last few videos, my funding is very, very, very tight, and it's very difficult for me to get all the parts. Now I'm going to have to try to get a ferrite rod that's, you know, about the size of a ruler. It's going to be a good size just to be able to test the uh, ability to broadcast and use the Tesla coil. But in order to um, test out what I'm talking about, you're going to have to have a much, much larger, you know, like the size of Wardenclyffe Tower with, um, with also that uh, particle beam, positively charged particle beam that he supposedly built for... Uh, a death ray weapon. I don't think that he built it as a weapon when he first built it. I b believe that he built it as a part of his uh, wireless transmission of power system. This is my best idea on what it would have been used for. It would have been used to attract the negatively charged electrons from in the ionosphere. That was my best guess. It just kind of hit me a little bit ago, so I'm just making this short video to hopefully get some feedback on the idea. Let me know what you think, and uh, please leave a comment, and let me know if uh, you have any ideas of your own. Thanks again for watching, and hopefully I'll talk to you soon. Stay tuned.